Welcome to the Global RPH YouTube channel, your trusted resource for clinical excellence and evidence-based medical education. Our content is designed for physicians, pharmacists, medical students, and healthcare professionals seeking in-depth insights into current therapies, emerging research, and practical applications in patient care. Subscribe to stay informed and enhance your clinical decision-making. This video presents a quick summary of our detailed blog article. For additional details, please review our original article in the blog section. Venous thromboembolism, including deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, is a leading cause of morbidity and mortality in cancer patients. Despite treatment, recurrence occurs in up to 20% of patients within a year, with a fatality rate nearing 15%. Low molecular weight heparins have long been the standard treatment based on favorable outcomes in trials like CLOT. However, daily injections, high costs, and poor adherence have led to growing interest in direct oral anticoagulants, such as rivaroxaban, adoxaban, and apixaban. Cancer patients face high risks of both recurrent VTE and bleeding, particularly in the first six months after diagnosis. Bleeding is also a major concern, with gastrointestinal and genitourinary cancers posing the highest risk. Key therapeutic goals include maximizing efficacy while minimizing bleeding, especially challenging in this population. Although direct oral anticoagulants offer ease of use, their bleeding risk, particularly in gastrointestinal malignancies, warrants caution. Patient-centered anticoagulant selection is crucial. Anticoagulant choice must be tailored to individual risk factors. For instance, renal function plays a significant role. Direct oral anticoagulants, or DOACs, differ in renal clearance. Dabigatran is cleared around 80% by the kidneys, while apixaban is about 27%. Therefore, apixaban is preferred in patients with renal impairment. When it comes to gastrointestinal or genitourinary cancers, these tumors heighten the bleeding risk associated with DOACs. Guidelines often favor low molecular weight heparin, especially in active gastrointestinal malignancy. For patients with brain metastases, low molecular weight heparin is generally safe. However, caution is needed for tumors like melanoma and renal cell carcinoma, which have high hemorrhagic potential. In cases of thrombocytopenia, full-dose anticoagulation is appropriate if platelet counts are above 50,000 per microliter. For lower counts, dose adjustments or temporary discontinuation are advised. Let's talk about key clinical trials. Randomized trials such as SELECT-D, HOCUS-IVT Cancer and Caravaggio have shown some important findings. DOACs reduce venous thromboembolism recurrence more effectively than low molecular weight heparin. For example, recurrence rates range from 4 to 7.9% with DOACs, compared to 11.3% with DALT Eparin. Additionally, apixaban shows a better safety profile for gastrointestinal bleeding than rivaroxaban or adoxaban. Overall mortality is similar between DOAX and low molecular weight heparin, but DOAX result in lower treatment discontinuation rates, around 39.6% versus 45%. Evidence synthesis and limitations. Trials vary in definitions of active cancer, patient inclusion, and follow-up duration, limiting generalizability. High-risk populations, including those with severe renal impairment or thrombocytopenia, are underrepresented. No head-to-head -head DOAC comparisons exist, and some studies lacked blinding, increasing bias risk. Direct oral anticoagulants offer effective, convenient treatment for cancer-associated thrombosis especially in patients without gastrointestinal cancers and with preserved renal function. However, low molecular weight heparin remains the safer choice for patients with high bleeding risk. The landscape of cancer-associated thrombosis management continues to evolve. Though current evidence supports direct oral anticoagulants as effective alternatives to low molecular weight heparin for most cancer patients, several limitations persist. Heterogeneity in cancer definitions, variable follow-up periods, and inconsistent inclusion criteria across trials complicate direct comparison. 
Additionally, inadequate evidence exists for high-risk subgroups, including patients with severe renal impairment, brain metastasis, or thrombocytopenia. Clinicians should therefore adopt an individualized approach based on cancer type, bleeding risk, renal function, and patient preference. For most patients without gastrointestinal malignancies and with adequate renal function, DOACs offer a convenient and effective option. Conversely, low molecular weight heparin remains preferable for patients with gastrointestinal cancers, active gastrointestinal bleeding, or severe renal impairment. During treatment, regular reassessment of the risk-benefit profile remains essential, especially beyond the initial six-month period. Future research must address current evidence gaps through targeted studies in high-risk subgroups and direct DOAC comparisons. Until then, multidisciplinary consultation among oncologists, hematologists, and thrombosis specialists provides the optimal framework for navigating this complex therapeutic landscape. Healthcare professionals should continuously monitor emerging evidence as clinical guidelines for cancer-associated thrombosis management continue to evolve with new research findings. Thank you for watching this Global RPH presentation. If you found the content valuable, please consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up. Your support helps us continue delivering high-quality, evidence-based medical content tailored to healthcare professionals like you. We have more in-depth topics and clinical insights coming soon, so stay tuned, and we'll see you in the next video.